You're listening to the Youth Creek Podcast on KHZ Network. Find us on Facebook at Decibel UNG Rayu and find us on Twitter at Decibel UNG. Since the beginning of time. If you like this episode, please leave a like and comment on our iTunes page at KHZ Network. And now for the podcast. One man has found the way to bring the mystery back to life. I own an island the coast of Costa Rica. And I spent the last five years setting up a kind of biological preserve here. On this private island, science has defied evolution. Where do you get a hundred million year old dinosaur plot? Genetics has mastered creation. We've made living biological attractions so astounding that they'll capture the imagination of the entire planet. And extinction is a thing of the past. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Hello everyone, welcome to the Youth Critic Retrospectives. I am your host, Kale Smith. Joining me today is Joseph Pollock. Hi, I'm Joseph. And today we are going to be discussing the Jurassic Park franchise. This would be where the uh, T-Rex just started howling. Mm-hmm. All right, so I love the Jurassic Park. That, like, that was one of the original movies that I went to a drive-in theater to. That is the Lion King. Did we have drive-in theaters over here? Well, all right, let me rephrase. I saw it in California oh. in the drive-in theater. Well, I, okay, know. okay, okay. All right. It it was it was good. Um, it was big production. It made crazy All the money. amount of money for how much was the budget. The budget for the movie was, I, I think, it especially was especially like, looking back. Yeah, yeah, looking back. Well, no, <laughs> even today, I, I think after after everything sudden down, said and done, it grossed like one point oh two billion dollars in its lifetime, and for th- that that would be ridiculous money for today for a movie especially with a budget of what like 60 million dollars 63 million dollars and it made worldwide uh and this is also just all-time gross because it came it had a couple had a couple other re-releases um uh one point one point one billion dollars yeah i i I read on the line a few days ago that it was 1.02 or something Mm -hmm. But that, yeah. that's a ridiculous amount of money. Now, obviously, like all sequels in history of mankind, the other movies did not gross that that kind of money, but they were all successful in their own right. Um, obviously, the budget grew as time went on, as all things do. Mm-hmm. But honestly, I mean, Jurassic Park was... The original was spot on. had a little bit of everything. Well, we can call it Jurassic Park because the others are just Jurassic World. So, right. Yeah. Jurassic, mm-hmm. yeah. Jurassic Park, Jurassic Lost World, um, Jurassic Park Three, and then Jur- did they have a nifty nickname for Three? No, uh, I don't think so. And then the yeah, and then the two new ones, the new one that's already come out, Jurassic World, and then Jurassic Fallen Kingdom. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I guess they, yeah, and we'll get to those eventually. Um, so. Uh, so what is you described a little bit of your history with seeing it at the drive-in, but what about like the other films and like how did you come to Jurassic Park? Well, I mean, who wouldn't? It was like in the nineties, eighties, and nineties. Steven Spielberg was still like he was God. He was God. Uh-huh. So even me being in, in ninety-five, and I don't want to tell you how old I am, but I was still a relatively young kid, and my my dad was like, hey. Remember, remember this movie and this movie. I was like, yeah. Well, the same guy that made that movie, those movies, made this movie. I was like, yeah. Let's go. Let's go. So here we are in the back of a <laughs> a Bronco, uh, <laughs> uh, like backed in into the spot with like the old nifty uh, driving theater speaker, and you just you just got to attach to the side of your car and the door, and you're just listening to it. And oh my gosh, it was. It, it set the atmosphere. I mean, the movie itself was had a great pace, had had a little bit of everything. Thrills, had the little romance. The wonder, it, yeah. The wonder. It just it was good. It was a good old movie, and there, there I am, a little kid, and uh, watching dinosaurs eat people. Mm-hmm. So, 
Yeah, my history, because I'm significantly younger than you, uh, they don't know my age either. Ouch. Yeah, they don't know my age, it's fine. Um, I came into this, like, after they all went on VHS, at Blockbuster. Be- right. Because I actually remember... Because uh, you were born here, right? Yeah, I wasn't born... I wasn't... Yeah, I had, like, a year and a month to go um, okay. before... Uh, yeah, before I was born. So it came out before... 93. 90, I'm... Well, yeah, 94. I'll go ahead. I'm 94 kid. Uh, but yeah, still, I was like... But still, you know, I think it was like when I was seven. Yeah. When... Because that's when the third one came out and DirecTV had like this big push to like... You can watch the entire trilogy on pay-per-view. Um, <laughs> yes. The only way to watch movies at home in the 90s was pay-per-view. Yeah, and not have to leave the house. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, and so I watched all three movies that way, and I loved it. And and funny enough, I for a period was like, I want to be a paleontologist. Like I loved it. Uh, when he when the original when he brought out that Velociraptor claw to that oh kid, my god, I was in there. I sat there, imagined myself being that kid. I was like, that dude scares me. I've seen all the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, and when he brought that out, and that was a significant change in demeanor for me. <laughs> Alan Grant loves traumatizing children, yes. so that's the that's the funny thing. He loves traumatizing children, and his arc is to learn to not traumatize children because they're yeah. already traumatized. The, I mean, <laughs> 2018, that children are traumatized anyway, just by growing up. So. <laughs> oh God! Oh God! <laughs> we won't go to that conversation, but um, yeah. as far as um, the, as far as the movie in in nineties, that was a significant mile marker in my book. As, not not just as far as movies I've seen, but as far as like what influenced me. I mean, I don't think I'm a messed up person. I watched dinosaurs eat people as a kid. To be fair, it wasn't that many people that got eaten. Uh, it was at least five. Okay, fair enough. It was at least five in a movie that had a to- grand total of like fifteen people in it. That's a significant number. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, you know, getting into the first movie already is the movie is very. It is. Looking back, it's very small. It's very small and contained. It was well written. That was it was. The, the, oh, yeah, 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 sure, yeah, sure. But uh, as I was saying, and I'll, I'll repeat it, in the 90s, this was still the time where the people would hire the source material writers to adapt it to movies. Mm-hmm. And I think that was a big influence on the quality of the transference from the, the novel that the source material was to the book because the same right the writer was the one who also wrote the screenplay for it. Right. And 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 also Michael Crichton was already a screenwriter and filmmaker beforehand. True. He had writ- he had done Westworld the original original oh, Westworld. Yeah, I, was, I was about to say. Man. Uh yeah, he Westworld is an old movie, uh, 1973 movie, so yeah. And he had just he done that so and he actually knew Steven Spielberg from a from the 70s, so... Because uh, I think uh, the Andromedon stain was universal. Was a universal project yeah. at one point. Yeah. Uh, so, so they knew each other, and that's kind of how the project came to be. Is uh, And that's basically the history of the project. And so Michael Crichton did have some history with it. He wrote, like, the first few drafts, and then David Ka- Kep came in and kind of did the polish. And that's... Yeah. And and then it took like three or four years to get the movie going because they were trying to figure out how to do the uh, dinosaur effects, especially for the wide shots, because they knew they were going to have to heavily rely on Stan Winston's uh, effects. Right. And so, but they didn't know what how to do like the wide shots of the dinosaur walking past the camera. They didn't quite know how to do that except for stop motion or go motion. Mm-hmm. And then uh, ILM Industrial Light and Magic was like, no, we have I'll, a way. I was about to say, they they pulled out. That was that was good. They did real good. Between the uh, little digital effects that they could provide, most of it was animatronics. Right. And it was, yeah, and that's the thing people don't realize is there's only like five minutes of CGI dinosaurs in the whole movie. Uh, and, well, yes, dinosaurs, and they also provided the... Uh, the graphics for Grant, or not uh, Grant, um, the 
the creator of Jurassic Park when they did the little little ride explaining how DNA and oh okay they did the, the little animation yeah, with the yeah, DNA yeah. guy yeah, yeah which for its time was really good I mean the movie itself I mean it was a two hour movie in 1993 right. yeah it, for for being in the 90s it had a lot going on in two hours that made it feel like it was not two hours. Right, and they filled the story in a very because if you look because if you compare Michael Crichton's Westworld to this, it feels very much like you know because technology kind of busts because of you know yeah. Dennis Nadry, of course. Well, but, well, that that brings in a good topic, a uh, conversation. How does Jurassic Park, a '90s movie that was two hours, which is um, most of its time, mm-hmm. compared to two hours movies now that sometimes you're just lost because. There's there's two hours of movie and you don't really know what happened. Or better yet, you're just bored. Or bored. Yeah. I mean, th- does does it speak to quality of writing? Does it speak to what I mentioned earlier? It's not only the quality of writing, but it also speaks to the quality of directing and editing. Because yeah. they're because yes. they're because yes. the way I I love how this movie is just cut together, even though. Uh, I mean, there's definitely it's not perfect. Oh no! I mean, there's but. definitely some continuity issues. Like oh, yes, there's yeah. like I mean, not not to get nitpicky, but there's the you know egg, you know the hand where or the medical medical arm where the egg was supposed to be, and then it disappears in the next oh, shot. Yes. Yep. Or uh, during the T Rex scene where the T Rex is supposedly you know gets out of the fence, and then you know a few shots later we see like Alan and Lex. They're tr- they're trying to scale down the wall, and below them is like trees and whatnot. We're like, so how? And then you had to suspend disbelief for, or or at least tell yourself a story about what happened to Samuel L. Jackson. Oh yeah, I mean, like it just he died, but yeah, uh, what? <coughs> I mean, it's in the book, but then again, you don't want to rely on the book when you're watching a movie. Right, it's supposed to be able to tell its own story. Right, like all movies are, and that leads me into other movies of today that I, I don't think it does it does that like um what what's the biggest movie and you know what I'm about to mention Star Wars ha, okay I know which one you. the newer ones oh. the newer ones well which well there's four where, of the newer ones all right uh, specifically <laughs> the last Jedi okay where the the studio is blaming the toxic fandom and the director, Ryan Johnson, is telling the fans that they need to know the source material to understand the movie. But why? The movies should be able to tell their own story. And if you tell people, oh, you'll understand this better if you read my six books I wrote. So go buy those. Um... But, that, but that's what I'm saying is, how, how does a movie from the 90s wrap itself around like that and tell its own story, whereas a movie in 2018 can't do that? Uh, uh, I won't. I'm not. I, I don't want to defend Last Jedi. I'm tired of talking about it. And, so. and yeah, it, it's not. I'm not bringing it up to discuss it. I'm bringing it up but to compare. I, but you're, versus the '90s. But sure. Now. But sure. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's. A, but then, but there's still a lot of movies that you know are adapted today where you're just confused or whatnot. Yeah. I mean, I'll yeah. go to Warcraft. Yes. Um, oh wow. Yes. I can't yes. believe I remember that movie. Um, or Assassin's <laughs> Creed, or. I shouldn't pick on just video game. Uh, those are, yeah, those are video or game. Or Divergent, the Divergent, Divergent movies. Okay. Like, you know, like, why, like, yeah. Aragon. I mean, oh, I barely remember that Wow, movie. wow, I pulled that one out. That one had some bad storytelling. I can't believe anyone remembers that movie. I own it. I, I'm, I'm sorry. We, we were all young I, I love the books. Like, that's the thing, though. I went into the movie thinking, oh, this is going to be exactly like the books. And it was mm-hmm. nothing like the books, and my furiousness knew no bounds. So it was it was that time. But yeah. that that just picks on it's like it's incredible the downgrade that writing and directing and just movie making process has come since the nineties where they can do a two hour movie with a full story and then almost five minutes of CGI um, little animation and a lot of animatronics, right. and his budget was sixty three million. And you didn't have a lot of movie stars. That's the thing that and also it, Jurassic Park didn't have. They just had character actors. They had char- yeah, they had character actors. Samuel L. Jackson was okay. He was known, but he wasn't that known. He wasn't the Samuel L. Jackson we know today. And Alan Grant was, or I'm sorry, Sam Neill was yes. in uh, J- John Carpenter movies. 
And then Laura Dern was just in yeah. David Lynch's Wild at Heart. And yeah. then Jeff Goldblum had kind of been I love in and his out. character, but I'm really, right. I'm really mad that they're bringing, trying to bring him back. They, they should see from other movies he's done that he does not have the same characterization that he once had. He's been out of it too long, I think. Yeah, and, and also I like the new Jeff Goldblum. I, I, I do too, but watching uh, Independence Day... Oh, well, that whole movie's oh just God. a train wreck. <laughs> you're, you're right. You are right on that. But, I mean, <coughs> I, I'm kind of curious. I'm, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. But my big thing is, in the last ten years, what movies have he done? Has he done? Right. I, I got you. And, and from what I can tell, he only has that one scene that's in the trailer. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> they brought him back for that one scene that we know in every of. trailer. And, oh, I, and if can... I if I've learned anything is the things that have the least amount of airtime on trailers probably have a lot of airtime on the movie, and that's what scares me about it. We'll we'll see. I have, I've heard some people that did see and say he only was in the courtroom scene. So. Okay, good, good. Okay, that, that covers me. But now, how do you think it went from the '93 Jurassic Park to '97? Okay, so after that, they you know Spielberg already in Jurassic Park. Did do some sequel setup with the Barbosa can or the shaving cream can? Yes. Getting dipped in the mud. Like there was already some ideas put into place to do a Jurassic Park two because Spielberg really loved working on Jurassic Park. He yeah, loved yeah. getting into the world. He loved doing it. He even loved it so much uh, that he didn't mind having to do post while he was doing Schindler's List. So yeah, so he did. So he was really so he, him doing a sequel was always going to happen. But what happened was Michael. So what happened was Michael Crichton kind of went off on his own, yep. and I'm blaming anything on him because it was his material, it's his book, and there wasn't a mutual agreement between Spielberg and Crichton that Spielberg for the second movie he would take whatever ideas or material or scenes that you know he liked from Lost World and put it in there. And, and that's what that for me that's one thing that lost me a little bit as far right. as the quality of the movie was. They lost the source writer. And I, I also think that reflected on a lot of what happened in the movie and the storytelling and all of that. I, I, I saw a difference. Well, I and know that now, then, I know that now. I haven't read the Lost World novel, but from what I can tell from like reading like the plot synopsis, and it's very, the book is very different from the movie. It's very... All, yeah. Um, and, and Michael Crichton was like, you know, it's fine. You know, it's fine. I, I did my book. I did my story. Now Spielberg will just do his movie. Uh, mm-hmm. And that was his reaction in 1995 when he finished the book. Uh, so what? So in going in this movie, they already kind of wanted Ian Malcolm back because they just could not figure out a logical way to get Alan or... Is it Ellie or Ellen? Ellen. Ellen to get back in get them back on the island because they weren't ready to look because at, at that moment when they were writing the script they were not ready to put any dinosaurs on the mainland they right. were not ready to go that leap yet uh so they were like well we can just get malcolm to come back and then so if through you know kind of you know some retconning and whatnot with the character they figured out a way to get ian malcolm back and then through plot convenience. But the problem with Lost World is why do we need to, why would these characters ever go back? Because even if someone you love was still on the island, you'd be like, well, f- shit. They're dead. Fine. They're fuck it. Fuck it. They're dead. Maybe I haven't loved someone that much to go on go on an island trip. Uh-huh. Go back to a horrible place. But I that's. Mean, John Hammond made a very compelling. Yeah. Very, very compelling offer. Offer. So I don't know. Like I, even then, I would be like, well, but I mean, to the credit, they wrote that they covered it up and all that. So maybe, yeah. so maybe just like ignorance, or just these people didn't hear the rumors, or they just were, or they just dismissed yeah. it, whatever. But still, it's like, man. Uh, Hammond really is like a psychopath here. He, <laughs> like, but then again, you know, Hammond has a good reason for doing it because I mean, he acknowledges that his nephew has a really terrible idea to bring the dinosaurs to back yeah. back to San Diego. 
What's up? That ends up happening anyway, and we saw how that goes. Yeah, and and that's and yes, yeah, so, I mean, I guess it justifies the means. I guess it, you know. So, but yeah. still, it's like I mean, it's. I'm saying what I'm saying is Lost World is very sketchy in how. Yes. And how it's like, in its catalyst, and how it just like catapults the plot forward because the because the movie just seems very disinterested in it, but uh, really, agree. but the mechanics is like it doesn't make any sense, and even Sarah Harding acts like an an idiot sometimes. Yeah, well, there there's one specific scene that I remember from there uh, when they have the baby T Rex. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, with, when they're trying to re- repair the leg. Yes. Yes. Uh, in all re- like just going off from the original movie, I'm pretty sure that the uh, the T Rexes would just destroy them all. Yeah. Just kill them all and rescue the baby that way. Also, how do we know that the T Rex, like the T Rex, just won't eat their baby that's just injured and sedated? Right. Right. They won't like just like cut off their losses because they don't know what's happening. Uh, they they have they don't know. They could easily just be like. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, at that, at that point, we're just assuming that there would be like, like motherly and fatherly instincts to protect and and nurture, but we don't know for a fact. I have never met a dinosaur, so. Well, we don't have. Well, a paleontologist probably wouldn't tell you because it's not something they would know from bones. Right. That's not what they would know from. I mean, maybe there's some anthropology that can explain this, it, but it, still. It, it just boggles me, just knowing the T-Rex from the first one. Well, really, the Velociraptors were the bad guy in the first one, but the T-Rex too, I would just... just I would Oh, just, these are different T-Rexes. Oh, no, I know. I know. Okay. I, know. Um, I would just think that instinct would kick in, kill everybody, and just cut your losses and continue on. Animal instinct, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, and but I mean, they do mess up that trailer really badly, and then another continuity error comes up because they're hanging off of a cliff. Oh yeah. That looks like they're in the, they're hanging right next to the, they're right next to shore, but it, but then we know from previous scene that that's just a field. Yes. So why are there waves? Is it really raining that hard? <laughs> Again, I, I hate to nitpick, but still, it's. It, but still, it's you know, interest. It's it's, inter- it's worth pointing out. It, it it makes the action scene look cooler, but you're still thinking in the back of your mind, like, how the f- well, how the fuck is this logically happening? Well, uh, the doctor's character. Um, There's a lot of doctors in Gold, this movie. Yeah, Goldblum. Mm-hmm. Uh, his character, it, his character changed a little bit to me, and I, I don't think it it changed a little bit too much. He he adopted Explain. somebody. No, he had kids, like, in the... F- he explained he had three kids. This is where the retconning comes from. Yes. There's, like, a scene where Alan and um, Ian are, like, sitting in the Jeep. And, and they're just, and they're just talking, talking about her and future. Yeah. yeah. Or, or talking about his partner. Future. Or, or He's girl. always looking for the next... X. X, Miss Malcolm. Yes. And he said he did have three kids in, like, a throwaway line. But, of course, this is part of the retconning. So yes. now he has uh, one kid. Yes. Um, or the, maybe it's just the kid he has custody of. But I mean, I mean, yeah. There's no background. Like, did he yeah. adopt her? Did he? Did he? Was he married to? A... Yeah, I mean, that's the other issue. Is uh, Ian Malcolm has uh, Ian Malcolm has a kid, and their relationship is barely explored at all. It's not even explored the least bit yeah. um in the you know racial dynamics at all it's not explored at any at any point you just get oh you know she does I, gymnastics yeah i i and he knew that, that. <laughs> i assume that he was trying to get in touch with the the fatherhood he missed with his previous kids by adopting this kid like I, that's what i thought that's i honestly thought as a kid then who had no racial biases whatsoever i was 12 13 oh, mm-hmm. i'm old um, it's I, I didn't care, but it just didn't make sense to me. Like they didn't explain it, so in my mind, I made my own story, and my story was he adopted a child because they didn't explain it. Yeah, and I mean, I admire, I admire what they were going for with mm-hmm. that. But the thing is, just like everything else, because really, Lost World kind of represents for me a lot of really good ideas, lots of really good ideas being thrown at the wall like spaghetti. <laughs> 
but it's all strung together very loosely for, yep. through very loose connective tissue, and it never quite adds up to anything exciting or worthwhile or anything meaningful. Right. And that's why I think Lost World suffers a lot. It's still, I still think there's some great moments in Lost World. Agreed. But, um, it's, but I mean, and because I, I still like the filmmaking in it. I think John Mus Kaminsky, that's DP. Yeah. And yes, on this show, oh, I've, yeah. and on this show, I've mentioned how he dis- completely missed the ball on Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. DP. Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> I've mentioned that multiple times, but still, I thought his work here was very well done, and it made it distinct from the last one. And I love the score. I loved, um, uh, I loved the whole basically with the the whole Velociraptor sequence in the movie. I loved so basically, I loved certain sequences, and then I really liked the San Diego scene because it's fun. It's a yeah. King Kong moment. It is a, that. That's the one thing I liked about the next movie was the King Kong moment, but the moment, I don't know, three, the third one was a lot, a lot more forgettable. Um, all, all I remember is the, uh, the Dracula moment when the ship pulled up and nobody was piloting the ship, <laughs> yeah. and you're thinking to yourself, is there a vampire on the ship, or is there, a, what's going on, and it ends up being a T-Rex just magically pulled everyone out of their bunks in small spaces and ate everybody. Um, that, that's what that's what it was. It was just Cat yeah. T Rex. I think one theory I heard, and it actually sounds a little bit more plausible, is that, and this could be its own little movie, right. is that on the way there, some Velociraptors, like before they launched, got on the ship uh-huh. or snuck on, and they ate most of the crew. And the only way they could, like get the velociraptors away from like the surviving crew is that they um is that they just lure they one of the one of the guys to sacrifice himself and put them in the t-rex so the t so the velociraptors would chase after them and then the t-rex would eat him and the other two velociraptors uh or the other velociraptors and then the guy would before he dies like uh, closes it, and then that's how it happened. And then they just didn't have anyone to power the ship. I don't know. That's the Not one explained, theory. But that's a theory. It's a good theory. It's a good theory. It's just there's no backing. Yeah. It, well, it doesn't help that you just don't really see any of the carnage. Right. You like, see a lot of dead bodies. Yeah. Even that, I didn't see the that many dead bodies. Ship. Right. But the scope ship. It was. Uh, they they explored the the captain, not the captain's quarters. The uh, the wheelhouse, they, they explored, they saw the man's hand on the button um, that, that, that kept on causing it to go up and down a little bit. Um, I don't know, just a lot of dead bodies and a lot of, not a lot of explanation of how that happened. Yeah, that's why, I, that's one of the things that always kind of messes with me because I'm like, surely they're not like implying that the T Rex would just wait outside. Or even like try to reach in right. to grab people, and then they just rip their and then their arm would just rip off. I mean, surely they're not implying that because that's. But then again, I think one of the reasons why the sequence doesn't work is because we don't see many bodies, or we don't see the true carnage. And the only and of course they couldn't show the carnage because it's got to be PG thirteen. So can't just have like corpses just ripped apart or whatnot. Well, and, I also I also saw. The quality going down, and you notice it in the overall budget for the movies. I not just budget. I mean, uh, the budgets did get higher. The budget? No, I meant the actual uh, earnings. Oh, okay. Uh, it went from what we said one point oh or one billion to six hundred and twenty million. Let me pull it. And I think uh, Jurassic Park three was even less than that, maybe five hundred. If I might be off a little bit. Um, uh, just keep talking for a second. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Lost World made domestically two twenty nine, and then it did make, and then worldwide it made six eighteen, and then uh, let yeah, me so six eight six twenty. I round, rounded up. Yeah, and Jurassic Park three. I'm looking up. The budget was higher by twenty million dollars. Yeah, it only made three hundred sixty eight million worldwide. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, and it, it's shorter. It's shorter by uh, thirty, 30 minutes. minutes than yeah. the original. 
and it made a whole lot less because it had less story to tell. It was a King Kong moment. Well, I think also, and we'll get in, you know what, do you want to move, well, hold on. Well, I think one of the reasons why Jurassic Park 3 just didn't work is, I think, because the dinosaur boom had kind of died down, and maybe because a little bit of the reaction of Lost World had kind of, but then also at that point, the whole 90s, and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the whole 90s was huge with dinosaurs. It was just flooded with dinosaur films, dinosaur TV shows. So, uh, I think yeah, by two thousand, I, I think by two thousand one, they were everyone was just kind of dinosaured out, and uh, I think I that, and also the response to number three was much more mixed than um, Lost World. So, uh, so I think, or much more divided. So, but I, I think there was a lot more storytelling. I mean, in the ninety, in the nineties, they came out with a movie called Twister. It was literally about chasing tornadoes. And yeah, I know. I know. It, it made Bill... Uh, first, Bill Paxton was in it, so you can't really... I can't really say a lot, but... Um, he's a great actor. God bless his soul. Um, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Absolutely. But, I mean, it's a. it was a 92... I was looking it up. That's why I was pausing. I had a budget of $92 million. Mm-hmm. It was made in 96... So it actually was just about as it was, it cost a little bit more than uh, Lost World, but mm-hmm. it made five hundred million dollars about a yeah. movie about chasing <coughs> tornadoes, and it, they filled the entire one hundred and twenty minutes of it, two hours, and this, it, it feels like forty five minutes because there was just so much going on and so much information, character building. Yeah, and uh, I think also in the nineties you could do a lot. more. You could make stories about a lot more because finally now we had, after Jurassic Park, we had finally reached the technology to do it. Because also, um, Twister was part of that CG boom. I, I was about to say, well, that and it, it had a good equilibrium between realistic realistic acting and realism versus CGI technology. Mm-hmm. And I think in, in 2018, in the late 21st century, or, yeah. Um, we are experiencing the other side. We are relying too much on technology and not enough on genuine acting and realism. Story. Story. We, yeah. We're, we're, yeah. I mean, we're in a world where the Fast and Furious 10 is a possibility. Oh, no. It, it's going to happen. They're going to do 9 and 10 back to back. All right. Fast and Furious 10. A story about cars and driving fast. Well, there's more story now than there was originally, but um, <laughs> it's explosions. It's it's a wow factor, and the and there's less. Oh, this is interesting. I mean, I come from uh, an era like '90s kid myself. '90s movie. I come from an era where Phenomenon was a great movie with John Travolta. With John Travolta. Yeah. Okay. I that still haven't cool. seen it. Oh, you're missing. It's a great movie, and it's way be like. Oh, it's such a great movie. But I mean, and, and we'll we'll move on to the to the Fallen World after this if you want. But I just <laughs> feel like we are losing out on. A, I mean, we're in a place where they would rather do sequels of stuff they've already established than risking new movies and it failing because they rather make money than than experiment and innovate. I agree. But here's your here's your bullhorn, preach to the choir, because <laughs> I don't know how else to because t- I don't know Minus how else to get that one. That was that sort of innovation and it was really good. I thought. And directed by Spielberg. And dri- my saint. Spielberg does every Spielberg is like all... I've never been attracted to a man. But, <laughs> but Spielberg, yeah, he's a good director. Um, every- once upon a time, James Cameron was there too, but. He might be one day. I always hope. <laughs> one day. He's they, still alive. He's still alive. And they've already scheduled the movie releases. Avatar 2 will come out, what was it, like eight years after Avatar 1? Oh, no. It's been almost ten years since oh, Avatar. God, right. Avatar is a great movie, too, by the way, but in my own mind. I was in high favorite. school when Avatar came out. Now really? I'm out of college. Yeah. I, I, wa- I watched... Uh, I hate to admit it, but I I, wa- I did not legally watch Avatar because I was in the middle of a mission deployed. So, 
but I loved it. It was a distraction at the time. So it's okay. Anyway, no, it's okay. There's no judgment. You're forgiven. Uh, anyway, what? Yeah, we're doing the cross, the T thing, the cross thing. T- time out. Time out. It's yeah. T-O. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so with so with that. We're going to take just a little break, and then we'll get back to Jurassic Park 3 because now we're kind of done with Spielberg era, sort of. Spielberg's still the producer, but still. We're done with the Spielberg-directed Jurassic Park movies. Uh, We're going to discuss the fall of Jurassic Park. Basically. (laughs) If it could fall anymore. Yes. But yet we're going to just take a little break. See you in a second, and you'll probably not even notice this because it'll be a seamless transition. It will be. Well, it will be. We're gonna go to. We're gonna go to another person to talk about Jurassic Park. But we'll be back in just a little bit. Okay. All right. All right. Welcome back. We are here with James Riz- Rizel. Is that yes? Uh, you're so Rizel. 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 Yeah, we'll let it slide. <laughs> I'll get it correct one of these days. Yeah, you probably won't. I've known people my entire life that still can't say it. <laughs> oh, oh gosh. But <laughs> but James, today we are discussing the Jurassic Park uh, movie. And uh, in the end, um, we'll talk a little bit about the, the sequels just in, in, as a capper. But for, this par- but for this portion, we're just talking about Jurassic Park. So uh, James, what's your history with... Um, Jurassic Park. I have a long history with Jurassic Park. I read the book when I was 10, almost 11 years old. I went, I got home from school one day. This was, I'm old. This was 19, uh, 91, 90, 91, 92, around there. I want to say probably around there. And I got home and my parents made me read all the time. This was back when you people read. And I came home one day from school, and there was this book with a dinosaur skeleton on it on my kitchen table. And I said, what is that? And they said, it's a book. And I said, thanks for sharing. And they told me it was about dinosaurs coming back to life, and there was a, like a zoo with dinosaurs. And I said, I have to read it. So I took the book. I read it in a couple of weeks. Absolutely loved it. Uh, then my parents said, oh, yeah, and there's a movie. This is, you know, this is before the internet, obviously. This is before anything i had no idea what was going on they're like by the way there's a, a movie coming being made about it i was like what and that was like a year or two after that and so i saw the movie on a friend's birthday we all went to go see it it was it wasn't like opening night it was probably like the saturday or whatever this is back before you had to pre-order tickets and you can get in the saturday afternoon for a matinee for a movie and we got in and we watched it and truth be told i was disappointed by the movie what i got home i got home my parents said how was it i go it wasn't as good as the book and i was i was very disappointed and then i went to go see it again with my parents and we all left and they're like yeah they left that like we were just talking about the book and and, uh, comparing it and whatnot and then i saw it again months later we're still in the theater months later somebody wants to see us so i again and i was still like it's just not jurassic park then I was delivering newspapers and the newspaper company I delivered for gave me a movie ticket for free at Christmas time that year to go see Jurassic Park for free. So I saw it four times in the theater <laughs> and I watched it and I was like, yeah, I guess as time went on, um, I was able to separate it more from the book. The book is still for me personally. Uh, it is my second favorite book I've ever read in my entire life. Christmas Carol's number one, Jurassic Park's number two, Legend of Sleepy Hollow's number three. Those are my top three books of all time. And so I've always had the trouble. Now, The Lost World, and we're going to talk about it later, but The Lost World was the opposite, where the book, I was like, well, that was garbage, and I actually preferred the movie to the book. But that was my experience with Jurassic Park. Is I was, the, the only other movie that ever hit me like that was when I was in, uh, in the first grade. We read Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and right after we watched Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, and I remember it ended. I turned to my teacher and I said, I didn't like it. Uh, <laughs> they're like the two most loved movies of all time are the ones that I've been the most disappointed with in my entire life. James, maybe you should not read the book beforehand. 
<laughs> that's uh, that's something that I well see now that I'm now that I'm old. I've learned to separate the book from movies when I watch them now. But back then, I I just uh, you know I especially since. <laughs> Especially in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory's case, it was literally like we finished the book and the next day we watched the movie in class. Like it wasn't like I had time to not think about the book. It was fresh in my mind. So, but these are movies that over time, obviously, like I said, I learned to separate them. And when I got into film, especially start to appreciate them for what they were, for what they are. But yeah, but that was my experience. But I did see it. I did see Jurassic Park four times in the theater. So that, you know, for a, for a 12 year old, for twelve, how, yeah, twelve year old, whatever I was, that's 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 quite a bit. Yeah, I. So my history is, I the first when the first one came out, I did not exist yet. <laughs> uh, so no excuses, no excuses. Yeah, I I, I didn't I didn't exist. Uh, and then I was three when the f- second one came out. So logically, my parents thought it was a good idea to skip that one mm-hmm. with me. And then, um, and then when the third one finally came out on VHS and pay-per-view, I finally watched all three movies. And as a seven, seven, eight year old kid, I loved it. I loved, loved it. I wanted to be a paleontologist right after watching the first movie. Mm-hmm. I just loved dinosaurs and I, and this was also during the time where I was like getting into the, the kaiju films like Godzilla. Um, so I was just, I was enamored by giant monsters and giant lizard looking things. And uh, so I, I really loved uh, Jurassic Park and, and my feeling on it. Um, let's see. Eight, 17 years after watching it, um, it's still a classic. It still works. It's like Jaws. The shark is still the shark still works. Jaws is like my favorite movie. Uh, yeah, you know, I just I've I I own all four of the Jurassic movies, and I watch them all. Eco- I just yeah I, I I love it. they're great movie. Like they're just fun. Like they're, they're great movies. Yeah, it's yeah, and I liked. Yeah, and what I loved about Jurassic Park was that it felt is that it felt authentic to what would actually happen. Mm-hmm. If because that because that's the thing about a lot of sci-fi movies, especially to, towards today, that I feel like have they all have this problem of they you know rely so much on the story they rely so much on the you know craziness or they want you to spend so much you know disbelief that you know, that, you know, you just don't think that you, you're just there for the spectacle. For me, I'm, I'm there for more of the story, the science. And I just, and Jurassic Park, like it, the science felt compelling and it was reasonably all like told, like, and it's all well paced and well edited because once we get through the wander, we figure out what's happening, what, you know, how the dinosaurs have come to be. And then, you know, after enough like learning and debating, we then get the chaos, and then and then comes the survival, and then the escape. And that's why I really love that order. Like I love that progressive or that progression order of of things that are going on, of sequences of events. And that's why I re. And to this day, I there's still there's some issues that have come up now having seen it for the like the 100th millionth time. Um, but still, I thought Jurassic I thought Jurassic Park was wonderful, and no, I have not read the book. Ooh, you know what? I was talking to somebody who commented on the Rebel Scum podcast, the podcast I do, and they said they prefer the movie to the book. So uh, you know. Maybe there's something to seeing the movie before reading the book. The book, the book is a lot more wordy. <laughs> well, it's Michael Crichton. <laughs> Michael Crichton is—he uh, was. Uh, I, I've, I think I've read. I've read most of it. I own most of his book. His medical books, which I can't remember what name he wrote them under. He had a uh, phenomenal stuff. He's a, such a tremendous writer. Uh, I do miss his books a lot. That what I like about Crichton is that he's a brilliant person and that he's just always thinking ahead mm-hmm. of the time. 
Because, I mean, you look at something like Westworld and his other movie, Looker, they're both movies that are, like, discussing ideas that wouldn't even be debated by other brilliant people for, like, another decade. Yeah, he was a a brilliant mind for sure. mm -hmm. So what was it in the multiple times uh, of watching Jurassic Park? Did you finally, like, what did you finally see in it that allowed you to like it i think when i was younger it was just dinosaurs doing dinosaur things because when i could when i finally was able to separate it from from the book and just watch it i was like because i love dinosaurs i mean what what kid doesn't you know so i was obsessed with dinosaurs for a while uh before way before the movie came out and then when the movie came out i was like i love dinosaurs and watch it and the raptor sequence clever girl is one of my favorites in, in cinema and you know, the lawyer, obviously, those obviously, it's just, it, it's got to be the Spielberg magic where he just, he knows how to do things. I remember, you know, one of the, fl- one of the things was, I remember he said it was going to be very scary. And I never, ever once in my life found that movie to be scary at all. And I think that is, and I mean this as a positive, I think that's Spielberg. Is Spielberg pull to go guys decide or whatever but he's not scary he doesn't do things to terrify you he does things to bring you on an adventure and you know even jaws which is considered by some you know a thriller or a horror or whatever and it, it, you know it is you know you watch quint get eaten alive that's horrifying but the whole movie is just fun to watch and that's like a spielberg thing with Jurassic park is it's fun to watch and even the lost world which people will say what they say it's fun to watch. There's just something he just knows how to, like you said, the pacing and all that. There's just something that he does that he brings to it, that he dares you to not, not enjoy what's on the screen. Right. And it's a, it's a kind of a fun house horror mm-hmm. when, when you think about it, because yeah. although I still think Jaws is a scary movie, like the, the opening scene oh, yeah. is still like the most but- terrible. But it's like, but it's a fun, but you know, but once, like after that, it's just, it's a fun movie all of a sudden. You're like, you're just having a good time until other things happen. But it, Jaws is the oh. best movie. Yeah, it's, Jaws is my favorite Spielberg movie. Like oh, it mine, is. Mine too. Yeah, it's just such a, it's such a good movie that. Uh, it, it just gets better and better. Like I, like I think on the my recent rewatch when I was in the theater, like I started noticing some little like sound issues, but that was that's the only time ever that I've noticed flaws in a movie mm-hmm. in the movie. So oh, so that was you know the seventies and things weren't as perfect back then as they are now. Yeah, well, yeah, they were not perfect or fine tuned, but still, I, I, I'm still impressed by Jaws to this day, and yeah, and I'm, I'm happy that the shark never worked. I'm sure it wouldn't have been as good if the shark worked. Oh yeah, I think, I think if we had, I think it would have become something like what a shark movie is today if, yeah, if it didn't work. I. I mean, it wouldn't have been like Sharknado bad, but <laughs> um, it would have been Sharknado too bad. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It it just it would, I yeah, it just wouldn't have worked. But you know, my my favorite scene in Jurassic, but my favorite scene in Jurassic Park is uh, like like I love you know the clever girl, and I love the lawyer, but the scene that. Always since the first time I saw it, my favorite scene to this day is Hammond talking about the flea circus eating the ice cream with uh, Ellie. That is my favorite scene in that movie. And it is a small scene. It is probably most people's least favorite scene. It is a scene that probably would get left on the cutting room floor in this day and age. But that is my favorite scene. And we're just talking about Jaws. And the thing with these movies, what they have are these moments, just these character moments where you learn so- something about the character where you just discover, yeah, this is a big cluster muck, but their heart is there. And movies don't do that as much nowadays. Movies are like, go, 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 go. But back then, you know, you're able to take the time and just in the middle of all these horrific events, let's stop and watch Hammond eat ice cream and talk about a flea circus. 
that's my second favorite scene. My my favorite scene in the whole movie is when Ian when Ian is trying to talk to Han- Ian Ellen El- Ellen and uh, Alan are sitting around and they're trying to talk to sense into Hammond into like no you've done, you've basically like you basically upended nature and you've basically taken control without yeah, l- like lunch. Yeah. 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 Great bas- yeah. Yeah. It's, it's great because it's where like the, th- it's where the theme is like, you know, at its, you know, most, ha- you know, ham fisted. And yeah. cause that's the whole idea of the movie is that, you know, you just can't control nature. You can't, nature doesn't abide by any human laws or reasoning or, uh, it doesn't. It doesn't abide by that. It just go, nature is its own thing that cannot be that can't be interrupted, can't be bothered. Yep. And that's why. And and it's and your favorite scene is my second favorite scene because of that human moment because it completes an arc for John Hammond. It completes that arc where he finally you know sees the scope of his problem and is like. Yeah, I just wasted a billion dollars on this park. I think that was I'm not to go into it too much, but part of I I like Jurassic World, but part of my problem with it was the park being open. <laughs> as weird as that sounds. I don't, I won't really talk about it, but, but that was part of the like what made the first one so good was it was like this shit like it was it was a lesson that I think we've lost. The, the lesson mm-hmm. and yeah i agree i agree that now that we're on this new trilogy of jurassic world i think yeah the lesson's kind of been i don't think it's been lost i think it's been undermined yeah that's a good way yeah because um, i mean we still have the lessons that we learn as an audience from the first movie but i think now 25 years later you know it's now been lessened because of jurassic because jurassic world kind of devalued everything that Hammond learned in the first movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah. So with that said, do you want to get into the sequels? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I Like I said, I bought The Lost World, the novelization at Price Club, some of that. Uh, I bought it on hardcover. Spent a lot of money for, uh, I was in the, the ninth grade, spent a lot of money on that thing for a high school kid and um, read it and was very underwhelmed. I saw the movie and I absolutely loved that movie. And it is my favorite of the Jurassic Park movies. Uh, Personal preference. I would, if you know, if you were saying critique them based on whatever, obviously the first one is the best film, but as a personal experience, I enjoy the heck out of, the Lost World. Jurassic Park 3. I worked at a movie theater the summer that came out. I saw it six times in the theater. I have a strange, unusual love for that film that cannot be described or compared to anything else. There is something about Jurassic Park 3. It is the most... It is the... It's useless. Like, it doesn't have a place in the saga whatsoever. It's like a B movie that they threw on screen, but they put Alan Grant in it. There's just something about it, and I watch it, and it's kind of like you know Super Mario Brother movies, the Super Mario Brother movie. I watch it. I'm just like, why do I enjoy this movie so much? Nothing makes sense. And then it ends, and it still doesn't make sense to me. I had the poster in my dorm room in college for Jurassic Park 3. I had a bunch of posters. Jurassic Park 3 was one of them. Attack of the Clones was the other one. Good movies. You see where I'm going with this? Made. I don't know if you've ever seen Made, but check that one out by John Favreau. Made. Those were movie posters that I had. Uh, so, I don't know. There's, and then Jurassic World came out. I'm super excited to see it. I liked it. Um, it was fun, but I, I always think that it's on par with in terms of quality. I think you know, it's. I don't consider it that much better than Jurassic Park three, to be honest. Yeah, and uh, I did see Made. It's, uh, it, but it was a long time ago. During my IFC phase, um, 
and but going back to Jurassic uh, Lost World, I I did see it, and every and what's funny about Lost World is every time I do watch it, my opinion changes on it. Like because I either yeah. like it or I don't. Uh, like that's how like close it is on the scale. I either give it like a four or a six out of ten. Yeah, it's 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 easy to. It's easy to go either way with it. I really like the San Diego scene at the end. I think that was, uh, I, I, I just, like, I love it too. Not? Yeah. It's like, have fun. Let's have some fun. Um, but it, I mean, look, it's, it, it doesn't have the moments that we just talked about that we really liked in the first one. And it was, it feels like, first of all, you haven't read, you have not read the books. So it's, it, it's weird. The Lost World book is weird because the way Jurassic Park ends is like, you can't really have a sequel because pretty much everyone dies. <laughs> Whereas the movie, no, nobody dies. So, you know, they, br- they bring Malcolm back from the dead. The worst scene, I-, I think the worst scene in all of the Jurassic Park movies is in the lost world. And that's when Malcolm's daughter does the gymnastics and hits the Raptor in the head. Probably, <laughs> probably the worst. I remember in the theater, I, like I said, I was loving this movie. And I remember that happened. And I was like, who like like you have a room full of smart people smart storytellers who was like you know it's a great idea that like no just just cut that out as is one of the worst it is one of the worst movies moments in movies i've seen it it, uh, that one i can't describe so i like to ignore that when i'm watching the movie or skip that if i can and (laughs) go right to the end you know, it. I always chuckle at that scene because I know how many people hate that scene, but it never has bothered me. Like, it, really? It, well, it just makes logical sense. She knows gymnastics. So. I think it would make more sense if the raptor ate her foot. <laughs> yeah, or or like maybe grabbed on and then she swung it. You know, out well, of she sw- she swings she swings too perfectly. I think is part of the problem. It's like she's like the gymnast of the year. Man, you did, they cut you from the team? <laughs> She's an Olympian. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> did you sit and see her challenge? Uh, That's yeah. the, the fourth movie was, is actually Jurassic Park 4 is going to be all about her making yeah. it to the Olympics and then these new dinosaurs from Fallen Kingdom show up. <laughs> um, but... But well, but I mean, yeah, it's not a bad. It's not the worst moment. It's I know, I know, it's very, I know, it's really bad. It's just it never bothered me because I know, I know, I know it's just, I know it's just not. It's it's not bad. It's not it's not a bad scene. And then, but yeah, my. Do you hear that? What? Hey, uh, uh, hang on just a second. Okay, it stopped. Do you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Hang on. And then, and then Jurassic Park three. Um, it's it's an okay B movie, like you said. Um. And then Jurassic, and then Jurassic World has. Uh, for me, Jurassic World just has that issue of it feels like a studio mandated movie, even though the movie is super clear that it wants to be anything else but a studio mandated sequel. Like it clearly has this, you know, hey, we're not, you know, we're not, you know, we're 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 not. You know, we're not, you know, product placement. We're not, we're against the product placement. We're against all the studio tie-ins and whatnot. And, but the movie, just for whatever reason, it's like, it just never comes off as that. It still just comes off as a studio mandated sequel with, you know, huge stars and, you know, and it just kind of loses, it kind of loses sight of what Jurassic Park was. Well, it's weird because the first Jurassic like, and they try to do things that the first Jurassic Park did. So in Jurassic Park, you have the kids whose parents are going through a divorce, and they go to the they go to the island to kind of get away. But that's that's in the background, you know. It's like they're having a weekend with their grandfather. Like, if you don't catch on the fact that their parents are having a are going through a divorce, it doesn't affect anything. But then in Jurassic World, 
they kind of push it in your face and it's uncomfortable and it's unnecessary. Like, I don't care that like, like there's no emotional connection to the, their parents whatsoever. And they just kind of bring it up halfway through the movie. Like, well, why? Uh, like, so that you could talk about something. So that, that was a problem. I have a few other problems with the movie. Like why that gyrosphere can go out of the park and just drive around wherever it wants. I feel like if you were to open up a billion dollar park, you would have restrictions on where those things could operate. <laughs> so Absolutely. That's what, that was one. Um, I, I mean, it's, a, but it is a fun movie. You know, you can't fault it for being anything else. Uh, it, it is it, like you said, it, it knows it knows what it is in a lot of ways, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, it's 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 definitely not perfect. Yeah, it's it. I it's my least favorite, but uh, it's my least favorite of the four movies because, but that's but two, three, and four are kind of right next to each other in terms of quality because they both they all have issues, but they're all all their issues are different. Yeah, and they're all like you know different. Like Lost World, it's Lost World. Basically, just feels like to me Spielberg wanted to do the sequel, and he didn't probably really like the book. I, I is, think I have this feeling that the book was written just so they could have a sequel based on a book. Yeah, because I I was kind of comparing the because I read what the plot was of the second book, and I was like, this doesn't really sound like the movie at all. No, it's not really. I haven't, you know, I haven't read the book in a long time because it's not that great. But it was, it's just, it was too hard to do a a sequel to the book because of what happens in the first book versus the movie. Like they're, they're very, they're different. They're too different for 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 them to stay on the same path is part of the problem. And I just think. Part of the problem with sequels too is it's like we got to go big, we got to go big, we got to go big. And do you have to go big? Do you, do you have to go big? That's that's the question that I have for most sequels: is why do you always feel the need you have to go bigger? Because it has to make more money, and the audience has to be wowed. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah, and that's kind of just my feel: is the third one's just kind of a forgettable B movie, as you said, and then the fourth one is just uh, it. It's it's there, and I hope Fallen Kingdom. I hope Fallen Kingdom is better. Do you have any before we get out? Do you have any expectations for Fallen Kingdom? I uh, my friend saw it um, a couple nights ago. Okay. Uh, depending on when people are listening to this, I don't know. Early June, mid June, somewhere around there. I want to say the 11th of June he saw it. Okay. Uh, I told him I don't want to hear his opinion of it, and I hung up the phone on him. I have my tickets bought for June 21st. I'm going on the Thursday night screening. I My expectations are just I'm just looking for a good time in the theater. and I, uh, I But I do hope I enjoy it more than the first one or the fourth one, depending on what we're going to call them, the more than Jurassic World. And I have a feeling – I actually have no idea what to expect because I'm not a huge fan of these hybrid monster demon things they're creating. Uh, and I know the third one, they say they're going to go back to having actual just plain old dinosaurs. But I'm, I'm this one's supposed, also supposed to have the most dinosaurs of any of the four movies before it. But does that mean they're just on the island and we see more movie, dinosaurs while they're on the island? Or is it after the island? I don't know. Uh, so I'm hoping just to have a good time, just enjoy it. And I'm hoping that I hear that theme music a lot. Sounds good. So uh, we, so James, we got to wrap up. Where, where can the good people find you? You can find me all over the interwebs at Petsafina, P E W Z A F I N A, where I tweet random crap, and, and also Instagram random crap. And you can also uh, check out my Star Wars podcast, Rebels Come Podcast, on the YouTube. Nice, and you. Nice. All right, we're gonna just go back to the we're gonna go back to the main show, and thanks, James, for being on the show, and we'll be back with you soon. Okay. Thanks for having me on. All right. So, um, like I said earlier in the show, I discovered the Jurassic Park franchise because the Jurassic Park three was on VHS and pay per view 
at the time, and I guess DVD as well, because DVD was there as well, but still, I discovered it through that, and that's, and yeah, I liked this movie as a kid. I liked Jurassic Park 3 as a kid, but I was like seven years old. (laughs) Well, I was slightly older than that, and uh, I I stand by my word, it was definitely forgettable. I mean, I, I do remember the... Like I said, the vampire, the Dracula moment with the ship, and I remember him trampling through the city, but uh, character development, don't remember it. I don't remember all that everybody... I know Grant was in it, but... There was no city in Jurassic Park 3. What? Yeah, there was no city in Jurassic Park 3. There was no city scenes. It's all on that on uh, uh, Sorna. Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Um, yeah, you're thinking the other movie. You're I thinking am. the last movie. I am, I am. I but um, but yeah the ish, but yeah Jurassic Park three I rewatched it a lot a little while ago, um, it it works if you think of it as a B movie. <laughs> yeah, I'm like stretching here because it's a f- it's fine. But the problem with the movie is a all the dinosaurs that look intimidating and scary are like there for jokes. Yeah, and then to be torn apart. And then all like the scary, and then all the dinosaurs that are supposed to be cute and cuddly uh, look ugly and horrific and like nightmare fuel. Like the like, there's not to jump around too much, but the brontosaurus scene where they're passing by, like it's supposed to be the wander moment. Yeah. Like those brontosaurus look like f- fucking scary, like nightmare fuel. Like so, but yeah, I with Jurassic Park three, it really isn't. And, and you can tell they were stretching, stretching to make this movie. Like, well, I agree. I mean, the, the, the avion scene, the flying uh, dinosaur scene, and a little observation. Oh, film. yeah, avion, okay. Uh, it's like you said ambient for a second. <laughs> yeah, we need ambient after this. <laughs> um, no, I, I think they were stretching too much to try to pull out another story. And it reflected. I mean, it made less. It made a third of what the original made. Well, I mean, and this goes for Lost World as well. What else can you do other than put the dinosaurs on the island or on the mainland? And what? What more story? What more theme? What more character? Because why would any of the original characters go back to the island? Here, picture this. It's Jurassic Park Lost World, okay? It opens up with them in the helicopter leaving the original island. Uh-huh. And you see a, a, an aquatic dinosaur get into the water. Suddenly now there's an aquatic dinosaur in the water. That can preempt. They have the ability to transport. Or they, we can see a, a, a shark. Or a, or a megalodon. Or megalodon. Or we, <coughs> it could be the great white shark moment okay. of... From the 70s and just make it a dinosaur. That could have been a sequel, a third one. Probably be more interesting than the third Jurassic Park. You know, I kind of do want to have a scene in, uh, in the, they, one of these. And they did do one. They did do one in Jurassic World. Right. Well, I was about to say, I, w- I would have loved to have, if the first one ended with, like, a megalodon shark just swimming under them. And then Alan Grant goes, Hammond, you dumb fuck! You old crackhead! <laughs> why did you, why did you make a megalodon shark and then put it in the open ocean? But it was for the, oh, it was for, it was gonna be an exhibit. It was a new Shamu. <laughs> <laughs> it was gonna be a, my Sea World exhibit. Oh no! That's what I'm saying. Is like the megalodon's heading to Costa Rica. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Costa Rica does not exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> We're having to shut down the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but no, but that that would have been a good that would have been a good opening scene, just like a little nostalgia. Wow, I can't say it. Nostalgic, yes, or nostalgic, yeah. Um, of the of the original, just get a little of that magic back by showing that helicopter scene, and then like maybe have them uh, Grant do it or both of them do a guest appearance. Maybe Hammond, he was still around, and just looking out, and you, you just see a dinosaur that uh, jumping out of the water, and you're like, oh. Oh shit! And then Hammond. Yeah, and then the movie could have progressed into, uh, well, Costa Rica, and here we are in Costa Rica, like investigating this Godzilla-looking dinosaur. 
Yeah, yeah. Rest in Godzilla. You're welcome. Crossover. Damn it, Hammond, you made a go- you made a le- giant lizard! You're the one that made Godzilla! Why would you do that? Hammond, what the fuck? Yeah. I wanted I wanted a lizard exhibit. We didn't <laughs> we didn't have any room to put it. I did say miniature. <laughs> <laughs> I told them to make it small. I can't help it that they don't listen to me. Yeah. I can't right. help it they thought big. <laughs> oh my oh, god. Yeah. See that that would have been a lot better. Uh, yeah, that would have been a lot better. Yeah, yeah. I just don't want. Yeah, Jurassic Park three. It's well. I still think it's impeccably because well made because it still moves like it moves like a bullet train. It yeah. it moves and it moves quickly, but still, I I think it's just a B movie. It's fine, um, and I don't really care. And I just didn't really care about that much going in because. Uh, all other than Alan Grant, everyone basically kidnapped Alan Grant and his friend or partner, uh, whoever that guy was. To they just kidnapped them to uh, this island to find a kid who probably was most likely dead anyway, but yeah. somehow miraculously survived. Uh, which is a wonder to me how that happened. Oh, sorry, a, a kid. Uh, yeah, there's a kid. Anxiety, I know. Yeah, yeah, and still, but they somehow make it. But the ending shot of that movie, and I guess this is why they didn't go forward, is because they would have had to explain what the pterodactyls were gonna be, how they like what they were gonna do now that they were searching for new nesting and their meat eaters. Yeah. So I guess that's why they didn't continue because they would have had to make a whole like two hundred million dollar movie about them chasing down pterodactyls. Yeah. So with that, we had a 14-year absence of Jurassic Park. And then finally, after the 3D re-release of Jurassic Park, they announced they were making a new movie with the Safety Not Guaranteed guy. (laughs) Yeah. Safety Not Guaranteed. Oh, my God. Did you see that movie? No. I'm glad I didn't. I heard... I heard rumors. It's um, it's a fine movie, but it's like it's definitely like if Spielberg made a Sundance movie, <laughs> like one of those Sundance movies, like Juno or something. Five hundred dresses of five hundred days, days of summer. summer. Yeah, that. But like the mo- but kind of bland and not really that interesting. Um. Okay. So and through that, he somehow. <laughs> Enter into Colin Trevorrow. I, I think they did a good selection of actors. I mean... Oh, yeah. They but, got the comedy <coughs> right out the window. Like, that was such a good choice. It's a good... It's a fine choice. The problem with Chris Pratt, and it goes to the whole reason I don't really like the movie that much, is that the whole movie... <coughs> the whole movie is basically this riff of studio filmmaking. Like... Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, hey, isn't it like you like we can run things well. We can run a franchise. We can run a park like yeah. they do in this movie. We can run it very well. We can, you know, run it. We can, you know, keep it secure. We can ma- manage it quite well. However, you know, the more you like the problem is people get underwhelmed after a while. So it's both an audience and a studio problem, cap- an audience and a capitalistic problem where we got to keep making, we got to up, keep up in the ante. And the more you up the ante, then you tip the jar that is nature, and, uh, and then nature just goes, you know, amok, wrecks havoc. And that's an interesting nature, idea. Nature always finds a way. Life finds a way. Life finds a way. Um... Um, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I think um, I've harped on it a few times. I think they could have done better and they chose not to. I agree. And, and that's where I kind of fall with Jurassic World is that it's a movie where it has a great idea. But in it the had execution. But, and oh, there's, yeah. There's so many parts in it that I'm just like, I yawned. I yawned a few times in this movie. Not because it was a bad movie, mind you. The, the good parts were good. But there's a lot of areas where I'm just like, what is going on? Am I supposed to be excited? Yeah, I barely remembered. I barely remember the Ifran Khan who plays like Hammond's like CEO or the person that Hammond left in charge. Uh, I, him, I I, I forgot he was in there. The Which one? There's two. Uh, I'm sorry, both of them. Oh yeah, 
the yeah. conversation at the beginning, I remember that vaguely, but they weren't very interesting. And trying to follow their relationships with their parent was just their divorcing parents. Was well, I mean, uh, it's a Spielberg thing to have like the divorce trope in there, but still, it's like it's barely developed. And then more insulting, Nick Robinson plays a character just the, the typical horny teenager, even though he has a girlfriend. But he, but when he gets on the island, he just basically just gets horny for anything that moves. Yes. Um, so you're, and that's his character. Um, and then the little brother is like an the quirky, maybe sort of autistic character, as wow. they do finger, as they do the finger, finger quotes. quotes, air quotes, air quotes. Uh, and then, and then here's my problem with the casting. Yeah. Chris Pratt is a great actor. He has great chops. He knows how to make the laugh. He knows how to make the yuck yucks. The timing, you know. He knows, you know, and if you direct him well, he's a he can be a, a strong presence in your movie. Oh, uh, trust me. I've seen the other side of that when, when I watched that movie with Jennifer. Gen- uh, Passengers. Yeah. yeah. No. I know what you're talking about. But with... Um, but with Chris Pratt, the reason why I think it's kind of a miscast is because if you look back at the original, mm-hmm. I mentioned it's all character actors. It's no stars. And the reason why Chris Pratt is kind of miscast is because you look at the Chris Pratt and he's like, I mean, he's like a superstar. You're, all you're seeing is Chris Pratt training yeah, dinosaurs. You're not he's seeing... He's Tom Cruise at Top Gun. Yeah, you're not seeing Owen Grady controlling the dinosaurs. You're not seeing a character. You're seeing Chris Pratt. Yes. Control, you know, managing velociraptors, and that kind of becomes an issue later. And that becomes kind of issue and kind of, in the grand scheme of things, part of the hypocrisy of Jurassic World. Yeah, because Jurassic World wants to tout to- itself as like it's against the you know capitalism and product placements and all this, but there's product placement everywhere, and it's it, it becomes like this, <laughs> and then it became this kind of capitalist movie. And and not to, not saying, you know, capitalist movies are a problem, but when you're trying to be against it, and then your movie just can't stop feeling like this one that uh, that thing that you're trying to be against, it does it doesn't I, bode well that you. I agree, and in, in my perspective, my the way I see it is, just story wise. I mean, Hammond was always he was for the park. The original the original thing was a park capitalism, but I mean. He didn't want to get to the point where you're like selling off the dinosaurs. And that's exactly where they took it. And also, at the end of Jurassic Park, Hammond learned his lesson to not build the park. Like, and and even so, he wanted the nature to be preserved. Right. So why would in in the end in the end he be like, if Frank, I don't know the, the character's name, so I'll just name the, if Frank Khan, my dying wish is to have the park rebuilt. Rebuilt. <laughs> And be successful. And be time. successful. <laughs> Do it for me, old friend. And that just sounds like a family scheme from the uh, the grandson. Yeah. The yeah. Yeah. It's just, so yeah. So even by if we say the Jurassic Park three and Lost World doesn't exist in the Jurassic World universe, still it's like you're going against you know what's been laid on the ground already. So. I don't want to bash Colin Trevorrow, but you kind of, but you, but you say yourself a fan, but you miss a lot of the, you know, but you miss a lot of the, like the essentials of why (laughs) Jurassic Park worked and why, you know, the first one worked and why this franchise was peering out. You kind of miss the point. It's like saying you're a fan of The Great Gatsby, but you missed the point of, you know, what, what it was trying to be. Right. It, so. Hmm. That sounds a lot familiar of a movie you're tired of talking about. Oh, please. <laughs> I don't. Please. I can't. I can't do it anymore. No, I'm tired of dealing with Last Jedi. <laughs> I said hey, it. I'm said tired it of me. it. I'm tired of it. Not me. I was just oh, I'm tired of it. Solo, too, so. Oh. That was a, that was a slap in the face, and I'm really surprised they're blaming the fans and not Kathleen Kennedy. But uh, I, I promised myself, and I promised you not to talk about Kathleen Kennedy. But I will have to say, she did really like, and she is she tied to this too. Yeah, she, she yeah, 
She did good in the Rose of Jurassic Park. I mean, she's I, a good producer. She, she was only in a role of an assistant producer. Like she was a co-producer. Um, no, the, she was like I mean, original? yeah, she was. I mean, she was the main producer along with Gerald Mullen. Right. Um, and then on the second one, she took an executive producing credit because I think. Spielberg was also working on a couple other projects going yeah. on at the same time. So she kind of had to take a step back and work on... I think she worked on Amistad. I'm not sure. Um, Either I, way. I, she, it's hard to keep up. Yeah, she's been attached to it a lot, but she's the, she's the focus of my ire right now. Well, and the reason why I kind of have to question Kathleen Kennedy is because she... And look, it's fine if you like Safety Not Guaranteed. It's totally fine. There's people out there. I know people that like the movie. Right. But I look at that movie and I go, okay, just go make another Sundance movie. Keep practicing mm-hmm. the work. Keep practicing your craft. Mm-hmm. Why was he Why was he responsible for... Why did... Why in the, why did, Why was he responsible for Jurassic World when clearly there's still a lot more growth he has to go through oh. uh, <clears throat> in order to make a $150 million movie? And and then on top of that, after the movie came out, he almost got to do episode 9. So, um, so yeah, I, I... And again, I'm not... I, I shouldn't bash on Trevorrow because... Trevorrow will be a part of the Jurassic World franchise for at least one more movie after Fallen Kingdom. <laughs> um, but we'll see how that fares. We'll we'll see. I mean, it's and we'll and I'll get to that in just a second. Um, but yeah, I was not, I was not the biggest fan of Jurassic World. Really, the only thing I liked about the movie was that ending fight with. The Tyrannosaurus and the Veloc- Blue and... You're my boy, Blue. Okay, we'll get to that in just a second. Because I forgot to mention that. But uh-huh. yeah, the, I just like the ending. That was, like that final fight is almost worth like a rennet yeah. for me. Like it's a really good... Like it's a really good fight. And it's all done in one shot. It's very well executed. Um... Uh, and, and also, it gave an arc to Bryce Dallas Howard's character Claire, because uh, she had to kind of learn, you know, how she kind of had to learn that business wasn't all. Uh, she had to she had to learn that you know she had to learn that you know family is you know she had to learn that family is important, but also these are she's playing with nature. Yeah, I, not, I wish they would have done not themselves products. A, yeah, I wish they would have done themselves a favor and brought in one of the old. Old actors, yeah, they probably even, will. Even as a you know goose egg, you know or Easter egg, sorry. Yeah, just, just like they're at the park checking things out in the background as you know <coughs> things are freaking out. Well, I mean, Ian Malcolm was like a hologram for like a if you just look yeah. closely, yeah. like he was like a hologram for a minute, um, like or you could see like his book right on the shelf. So I mean, these characters do exist. No, no, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah, and go ahead. I don't know. I just think they need to integrate the old with the new a little bit better than just make a whole movie of nothing but new characters and slowly slide in old characters to up the ante. I'm waiting any day now for someone to say Al, or Sam Neill is either going to be in the third one or he has a cameo. I agree. Along I, with I, I feel the Jeff Goldblum. I feel the same. I'm just waiting for that day to happen. I don't think it will. I don't have any reason to think it will, but they, I just know it's going to... They, something. they say they have a plan, and that's what I like to hear is that if you're planning on multiple movies that you have a plan. Mar- they did it well with Marvel. Well, uh, Disney, I was talking mm-hmm. about Disney, but... It, I know for movie making processes, if you're going to make a trilogy, there should be a plan in place. And so far, I've heard there is one. And there was. I mean, when Colin Trevorrow was marketing the last one or Jurassic World, um, he said that him and Derek Connolly, the co-writer of World and this new one, they had like a, a trilogy in mind, and and they are gonna and they are currently writing the third one uh, with. Trevorrow in the directing chair again. 
but yeah, it's they're they're all they have a plan, and we'll see more of that f- plan in fruition in a couple weeks. Really, in a week from now, um, depending on when you're listening, or even maybe when it just entered into theaters, depending on when you're listening to this podcast. Um, so, but yeah, it's gonna be. We'll see the fruition of it very soon. And hopefully it's a good plan. I'm, yeah. I don't want... I hope... I'm always holding out hope that these movies will impress me, but... Well, tell me what your thoughts of Fallen Kingdom is going to be. Uh, are well, you going in there with expectations? And if so, what are, they, what are they? Well, I don't think I've made... I don't think I've made light of... what I don't really like the story they've presented so far. Like, so far the movie seems to be about going back in to save the dinosaurs from a, a, an erupting volcano that just maybe either was active or reactivated itself. I mean, if you're planning a park, why wouldn't you? Let's yeah. Let's not look into geographical yeah. anomalies, though. So. Yeah, let's not look into it. So, um, so they're going to save the dinosaurs... Or save as many of the species as they can, so and then maybe possibly relocate them to another to like Isla Sorna, or whatever. That, um, but still, my uh, go ahead. That that leads me to the previous questions. Like they're just doing what I, what I thought would have been a good idea for Jurassic Park three instead of what it was. I mean, all the dinosaurs are jumping in the water to get away from the lava. What what sense yeah. they could just swim? Or better yet, let me even throw this out. Like. Why are we saving the dinosaurs? They're a threat to our own human evolution, to save our own the species. Save the dinosaurs, save the world. <laughs> just I just died a little. <laughs> I just died. Say, say a little uh, hero's quote. Save the dinosaurs, save the world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're welcome. You are absolutely welcome for that. You can use that all you want. It's just for you. Just for you. So, <laughs> still, it's, you know, right. the, and that's my thing is, and also, and then, to make it worse, in the next trailer, they bring up, well, now, they are saving the species, they're bringing the species back to the mainland to sell them off to rich people, <laughs> which I'm like, <coughs> even dumber. <laughs> like, why don't, like, why don't we just have, like, why don't we just build a nu- a big nuclear bomb and just, like, have, like, What's a character that's very? Uh, I I feel like I feel like they got like postcards and uh, with a bunch of ideas. <laughs> they put them on the wall and they took darts and whatever postcard had the most darts at the end is what it went with because it doesn't make any sense. It's going exactly the opposite of what the original plan was, or the original idea of that the lesson Hammond learned after the the first two movies. Uh, and I don't know now that he's passed his children are being greedy I don't know if they'll explain any of that or if we just gotta or if that. it's just family is just completely out of it or yeah well, that's, exactly, that's happening exactly. engine can be ran by just some corporate uh, hack a corporate hack or a, a group of corporate hacks in a, mm-hmm. in a that are just trying to sell assets off to make up lost damage yeah yeah I mean it, it could be anything but I mean it just I don't know they already did to bring it back to the mainland to sell it for money, but they did it with the original one with what's his face trying to sell it in the freaking uh, barber his, shaving cream. Right, and then his, and then get, Hammond's nephew tried to bring the dinosaurs on mainland to have yeah. a mainland attraction. And then they tried to um, engine was there for the third movie too, sort of, sort of, but they were there so in spirit. The, they were there in spirit, yeah. But, I mean, they've done the same story. That that tidbit of the story over and over again. They're trying to sell the dinosaurs for a monetary gain. Capitalism is terrible. Let's, let's burn it to ground. That's why I think Colin Trevorrow doesn't... He's just rehashing the ideas because you look at Jurassic World. It basically is Jurassic Park. Just... Yeah. <coughs> now the park's World open. Is, yeah, I was about to say, Jurassic Park... Is, or Jurassic World is Jurassic Park. Now the park's just open. Now the park's open. It's yeah. open to the public. And then, and then lost twenty war. years of innovation to make it the way it is. Yeah, yeah and uh, lost, and then so Fallen Kingdom, the and then Fallen Kingdom is just Lost World, but um, they succeeded in capturing all the dinosaurs. Yep, and brought them on the mainland, and now, <laughs> now they're going to spend half of a movie to get rid of the dinosaurs. Yeah, I, I feel like it's the. I, I maybe go a little too far with this, but it's going to end up being a Planet of the Dinosaurs. 
That might be the third movie. Just we're so stupid, <laughs> or the characters in this movie are so stupid that they're like that. You know, the movie just ends with like like the same way Rise of the Planet of the Apes ends, <laughs> just like uh, as I raise my hand in anger. Just like the 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 dinosaurs just you know start talking or some something stupid. The mutant, the mutant dinosaur can finally communicate and build a pack like Caesar, and then and then make a whole new like dinosaur pack or dinosaur civilization. That's what will the third movie be? Yep. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. what what is it like? What is it? Modern day movies without like leading a trilogy into a new trilogy, just so we can make a little bit more money off of it. So I can I see it. You're right. The third one will be. Dinosaurs rampage to the United States, uh, or whatever main main island they go to, and then it'll lead into a new trilogy. They'll think of ten years from now. Hey guys, we never explored the idea of dinosaurs ruling the world again. Let's do that, and it'll be it'll oh. freak it'll be uh, Chris Pratt when he's eighty years old trying to get rid of dinosaurs. That's what it'll be. That's the next trilogy. You're welcome. Trademark. Oh, Called it down. Why did you say that? Now they'll do it. <laughs> they'll, they'll do it. <laughs> or, it's been thought of. Let's do this. Or worse yet, we'll have to make that movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. I'm just saying. It's just. Uh, it just furthers explain that uh, Hollywood has lost its luster. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Do we have any more? So, do we have any more things to say on the Jurassic Park franchise before we get to Fallen Kingdom? Uh, no. All right. Well, um, that is it for this retrospective on the franchise as a whole. Joseph, thank you. Do you have any, like, Twitter or anything to plug? Uh, I have a Facebook photography page, uh, Solitaire Photography Georgia. And I do all that kind of stuff. I do uh, film events or uh, photography events for filming. I do photography events for models, I do it for uh, Dragon Con in Atlanta. I do Great. that a lot. Um, I'll be doing that this year in September. I actually have a contract with the magazine to, if they like them, they buy them. So I'll have a link uh, to the Facebook page below of uh, this podcast. Uh, Joseph, thank you so much. Uh, you can. F- That's a you can. Go clap. Thank you. And you can follow this podcast on Twitter at The Youth Critic. You can also follow me uh, at Movie Kale. You can also follow the channel that distributes this podcast at KHT Network. Thanks, everyone. We'll be back with the next retrospective, Last Action Hero. Of course, but the clock will open with the basic tour you're about to take. Hey, look at this. You see something? Dinosaurs and man. Two species separated by 65 million years of evolution. Just been suddenly thrown back into the mix together. How can we possibly have the slightest idea? You feel that? What to expect? Since you're failing all over the park. Phones are out too. Universal Pictures presents. I can't get Jurassic Park back online. Adventure 65 million years in the making. This is just a delay. That door is all major theme parks have delays. When they opened Disneyland in 1956, nothing worked. But John, if the Pirates of the Caribbean breaks down, the Pirates don't eat the tourists. You sure we're safe? Yes. Unless they figure out how to open doors.